In these Masters of the Air clips, we see both air-to-air -air rockets and surface-to-air missile strikes on bombers. The intent of this video is to conduct a fact check on usage of these weapons as narrated by the series. This video is in response to channel comment requests for clarification on rocket usage in the series. The Germans were developing many, but only deployed two, anti-bomber rockets during World War II. Let's start with these clips from Episode 3. The 100th Bomb Group B-17s are attacking the Messerschmitt factory in Regensburg, Germany. This mission occurred on August 17, 1943. The only operational air-to-air -air rocket during the summer of 1943 was a 21-centimeter WGR. They were fired from launch tubes slung under the wings of German aircraft, mainly from rocket-equipped BF-110 twin-engine bomber interceptors. This page from a 1946 document titled German Explosive Ordnance outlines characteristics of the 21cm high-explosive spin-stabilized rocket. The rocket is 49 inches in length, 8.27 inches in diameter, or 21 centimeters, and weighs 241 pounds. The warhead contains 22.4 pounds of an explosive fill, which is around 10 times the explosive fill of a German 88mm caliber cannon projectile. These rockets were also adopted for ground-to-ground -ground engagements. Additional description in a cutaway of the rocket is shown on this page from an October 1944 Handbook of Enemy Ammunition Document. It is fired from an airborne launch tube. The rocket's fuse equates to model ZTZS-30. A description and cutaway of the rocket's fuse is shown on this page from an Aberdeen Proving Ground document titled German Artillery Projectiles and Fuses. Key points are this is the same fuse adopted by the 88 and 105 mm caliber flat guns. The fuse will detonate by timer countdown from launch. Duration can be set up to 30 seconds. The fuse's detonation train is triggered by time only, not contact, not barometric pressure, not proximity. The rocket tubes are angled up to account for the rocket's arced parabolic trajectory. This is why all documents indicate the rockets are lobbed into the formations, not fired. The rocket's time of flight to detonation was set to around 5 seconds. The rockets will have traveled around 1,000 to 1,300 yards in 5 seconds. The fuse's timer duration cannot be changed in flight. This image shows a position of the lead, high, and low groups that made up the summer 1943 combat wing. This chart from a 1945 War Department technical manual titled Handbook on German Military Forces outlines the German attack policies of the bomber interceptors. Concentrate attacks on a single combat wing or group. Try to loosen the formation. This reduces their mutual fire support. Twin-engine fighters were adopted for rocket attacks to break up the formations. This page from a 1983 Office of Air Force Historicals document titled The Army Air Forces in World War II, Volume 2, describes a typical rocket attack. Large formations of twin-engine fighters lobbed rockets into the formation from around 1,000 yards, attacking from the rear. Rear stern attacks were more accurate in estimating the rocket's detonation range and allows for an accurate no-deflection shot. Aim for the combat wing's group lead. Refueled single-engine fighters can attack the stragglers. Once the rockets are expended, the twin-engine fighters can attack the bombers with their guns. Concentrate attacks on one formation at a time. Break up the formation with rockets and then attack stragglers with gunfire. This chart outlines German attack tactics during the Schweinfurt II ball bearing mission of October 1943 from a 1945 Army Air Forces Evaluation Board document titled Eighth Air Forces Tactical Development. Twin engine fighters lobbed rockets from the rear at distances around 1,000 yards. This chart from a December 1943 Headquarters Eighth Air Force document titled German Fighter Tactics Against the Flying Fortresses outlines a typical rocket attack encountered. Planes A, B, C, and D fire rockets into the formations. Planes E and F close in and attack the cripples and stragglers. Bomber advice, maintain formation discipline at all costs. Best to weave slightly. Since the rockets are lobbed and travel at a low velocity, weaving will decrease the chances of the rockets detonating in the formation. This chart shows a bomber rocket attack by an ME-110. The ME-110 approaches from the rear, speed matches a bomber, and when within 1,280 yards, lobs the rockets at the bomber. The rockets will detonate around 5 seconds later. The effective range of the bomber's tail guns is 1,000 yards. The lethal range of the warhead is around 50 feet. The long-range escort P-51 Mustangs have canceled out the effectiveness of the rocket-equipped German twin-engine bomber interceptors 
As discussed on this April 1944 Weekly Intelligence Summary, rocket-equipped twin-engine bomber interceptors need their own fighter escort, which makes them a liability more than an asset. The P-51 and P-38 long-range escorts rendered the rocket-firing twin-engine fighter attacks obsolete. Let's take another look at the Episode 3 rocket attack. From this 3 o'clock high attack direction, the rocket-equipped bomber interceptor pilot will need to aim and fire his rocket, taking into account his plane's speed and direction, the bomber's speed and direction, the rocket's speed, angle of launch, rocket's parabolic arc, high deflection target lead, and the 5-second time of flight to detonation. The rocket will not detonate on contact. The fuse's 5-second countdown triggers the warhead's detonation. This is why the rocket-equipped bomber interceptors attack from the rear. Just slow down and speed match the bombers, use your gun sight for targeting and estimating the 1,280-yard distance, and just lob your rockets into the formation. No speed differential, no leading, no deflection, and no bomber tail gunner threat. If all goes well, the warhead detonates at the preset duration of 5 seconds, breaking up the formation, and if lucky, destroying a bomber or two in the process. The series visual effects supervisor did indicate in an interview that the production team wanted a shot from the side to service the story by minimizing the changing camera's POV. Also, he acknowledged the clips did not represent German rocket attack practice. Shifting to Episode 9, The Rocket Attack of February 3, 1945, the mission where Rosie gets shot down. The target was a marshalling yard in Berlin. This map shows the state of the Reich-occupied territories as of February 1, 1945 from a document titled Atlas of World Battlefronts and Semi-Monthly Phases. Berlin is here. Newly captured Russian territory is here. This is the area that Rosie bailed out over. This image shows the location of flak batteries as of February 23, 1945. The rocket's exhaust trail seems to show it as a guided or homing surface-to-air missile. However, post-war review of all German ground-to-air rocket projects indicate Germany was working on but never deployed any surface-to-air anti-bomber missiles. They just did not have the necessary guidance system, proximity fuses, or working rocket platforms by the time the war ended. This page from a 1946 AAF Scientific Advisory Group document titled Technical Intelligence Supplement outlines the state of the World War II missile guidance systems. No belligerent in World War II deployed an operational missile homing system. This page from a July 5, 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report indicates Germany was six months away from fielding a working proximity fuse. This list from an August 1945 Combined Intelligence Objective Subcommittee document titled German High-Speed Airplanes and Design Development outlines the status of Germany's missile programs as of February 1945. The V-1 and V-2 were in production and in service. These seven programs were to be terminated at once. None were ever deployed. These four programs were to be continued but terminated at the end of their development. None of them ever saw combat service. These seven programs were given top priority. They were all unguided missiles or rocket programs. None of the air-to-ground rockets listed ever saw combat service. Per the February 3, 1945 post-mission report, an eyewitness saw a ground-launched rocket striking Rosie's plane. This is clearly an observer mistake, as no surface-to-air anti-bomber missiles were fielded by Germany in World War II. Do you agree with the screenwriter including the episode ground-to-air missile scene, likely just based solely on this eyewitness account? In summary, the episode 3 clip should show 21-centimeter rockets fired from the rear of the formation, not the side. Germany did not have any operational surface-to-air anti-bomber rockets or missiles during World War II. Germany possessed no operational guidance, tracking, homing, or proximity fuse systems required for the missile to behave the way it did in the clip. This scene is likely based on an eyewitness account, which cannot be substantiated given the state of Germany's missile program. If you've enjoyed these Masters of the Air fact-checking videos, please consider liking and or commenting.